called modern uh, you know personality like that that's that's basically how i uh, you know thought while writing that's that was my uh, thought process that i wanted to present three different uh, personalities from three different eras uh, to show that no it's been there all the time uh, honesty was there 5000 years back or even before that millions of years ago dishonesty also was there similarly during the medieval times also honesty was there dishonesty was there 2000 years back judas was dishonest 2500 years ago you know uh, lord buddha's uh, disciple was showing you know great honesty and in the last say 500 to 800 years also honesty and dishonesty we have seen so this is basically what, what my idea was maybe i can look for a, a little more engaging story um uh, again you know i'll tell you uh, content development is a very subjective thing something that i think will work um may not work in the classroom and um, so this feedback is very very important so i'll keep that in mind i'll make a note that uh, instruction for you said you know but this thing lord buddha's thing right yes prabhu yeah okay uh -huh. fine Uh, and uh, we will revise uh, the books uh, you books are staying in the classroom and we are doing all the activities in the classroom only for the younger kids i think okay. the elder kids are taking it home elder kids we have not given the books oh, okay okay sorry i don't i didn't know about it sorry <laughs> okay so next week also you are doing honesty only then yes prabhu all right so then uh, this is not required we will take a look at uh, the pridelessness session next week only next friday we'll look at it yes sir okay so uh, you can uh, you all can decide when you want the training probably uh, uh, Pr pranasaki mata ji can come up with um, a schedule and mata ji yes prabhu next sunday yeah next sunday or i will check with everybody and i will yeah yeah you can check with everybody and then uh, i am here uh, you know i can ask devotees also to be available so uh, we can schedule it for a couple of weeks or something like that the last week maybe somebody can come there uh, we'll see uh, you know we'll we'll first put the schedule then we'll decide what to do is that okay yes prabhu okay, okay. So then we'll go to oh. okay this is senior pradeep prabhu lata mata ji this is for you Okay, Prabhu. <laughs> yeah, for everybody. But... So this is a last session. It's basically practicing truthfulness. We are looking at how to practice truthfulness. This session is dedicated to Shila Prabhupada. So you, you do the review. And then uh, truth tracker again. Um, okay. Truth tracker. The first week. Um, I mean, the fourth session. You did a review. You only asked them. Okay, have you done? some kids may not have done may not have worked on the truth tracker so you you kind of you have to motivate them to do it and um, this week what what you have uh, i mean last week in the fourth session you would have told them that um, try and reduce every day 
uh, you know the number of lies that you've been speaking by one so please do that so this week what you're doing is you're just you know revisiting that have you been doing how is it going have you been able to reduce or is it increasing so uh, those things you are asking here and so once the review is over then you can move on so um, last week we did uh, out of four dynamics we did three so this is the last dynamic that we are going to do so these are the three that we did already last week so don't consider outcome we saw this we also saw gambling erodes truthfulness then uh, we told you'll have to avoid exaggeration because exaggeration is also one form of lying we told that now we are telling today um the fourth dynamic is uh, learning to speak the truth palatably that's what we are uh, saying so should be like sugar you know coming out of our sugar or honey or whatever <laughs> something sweet coming out of our mouths so um this is a you know hitopadesh uh, verse which says satyam bruyat priyam bruyat that means bruyat means to speak if you are speaking the truth satyam bruyat priyam bruyat speak very palatably in a manner in which the other person can accept it now today it has become a practice people say that oh i am very outspoken what's there in my mind i speak that is the sign of a very weak person only weak people cannot calibrate their uh, speech and uh, so you know today they think it is strength actually it is not they think it is okay for me to throw uh, you know abuse and use uh, foul language and filthy stuff you know speaking all those kind of things and that's my freedom and uh, that is basically uh, uh, you know power and all kinds of rubbish understanding but actually that's not when some you know a person who really is powerful is a person who has power who has the ability to do something and doesn't get provoked and he can establish restraint on himself while wielding so much power he is at the disposal of great power he can crush somebody like anything but then still he is you know he is not getting provoked and uh, he is uh, applying restraint on himself that is a sign of uh, true power um you know like in the spider man movie uh, the uncle of uh, spider man he is shot and he is dying so he tells spider man that remember this always uh, peter that uh, you know spider man's name is social name is peter parker so he says that uh, with the great power comes great responsibility you know in the past also why uh, people you don't have to tell all these things i'm just giving you a background uh, you don't have to mention all these things in the class so um the idea is uh, you know for instance why didn't um uh, parashuram uh, why did parashuram curse uh, karna no so why did he curse him that all that i have taught you when you need it the most you will forget all of them like that you will forget the mantra of uh, the brahmastra like that so why did uh, parashuram do that because he saw that there was irresponsibility on the part of uh, karna um having misrepresented himself when come to parashuram that itself shows that he was not honest he was misrepresenting facts he was being irresponsible so parashuram's it was not out of anger that he told a lie that parashuram you know these are very deep personalities they don't act very superficially so parashuram is thinking that this guy if with me his teacher with me he can act irresponsibly like this how is he going to uh, use what power i am going to hand over to him responsibly so it is a reflection on the character of karna not on the you know anger of uh, parashuram parashuram did get angry but that was for a different purpose altogether he had a mission he is an incarnation of the lord he came with a particular mission to wipe out the kshatriyas and he did that because the kshatriyas had become corrupt so we can we cannot just take things out of context and then just generalize you know like that people are stupid you know in the modern world they misunderstand our scriptures you know like this when they understand these things superficially or say they criticize dronacharya 
you know, he asking the thumb of Ekalavya. They don't even understand why Dronacharya did all those things. Uh, anyway, I mean, that's a long explanation why um, Dronacharya felt Ekalavya is not fit to be taught the martial arts. Um, you know, there are many, many explanations. I don't want to get into that. Madhvacharya has covered all these things in Tatpare Nirnaya, you know, in the book that he wrote, clarifying many of the misunderstandings that could possibly arise in Ramayana and Mahabharata. So, you know, these things are there. So, you know, today people think that oh, it is okay for me to, you see, you go to social media and the comments that are coming out in uh, Facebook or YouTube or whatever, people abuse each other. There's so much envy and hatred towards each other. This is madness. So, you know, even if we are speaking the truth, one has to exercise restraint. Prabhupada, in one purport, he says, the mark of the greatness of a person is uh, how much he is able to tolerate provocation. He says, you know, one is able to tolerate a provocation. How much he is able to tolerate, that is the mark of his greatness. That much he is great. The more his tolerance is to uh, tolerate provocations, um, you know, he is uh, greater and greater to that degree. So it is not that, oh, I am speaking the truth, so I will just speak. No, it is not like that. And, uh, uh, and the next portion of the verse is, Ma Bruyat Satyam. Don't speak the truth. You know, it says, Ma Bruyat Satyam Apriyam. If you are going to speak unpalatably, Apriyam, in a very disconcerting manner, then better you don't speak the truth. Don't speak on it. You know, this is, so, this is not something, oh, this is a social thing. Uh, in spiritual life, we don't have to follow, we'll have to speak the truth and all that. Of course, yes, we'll have to speak the truth. We'll have to present facts as they are. But Krishna also talks about it in the Bhagavad Gita. He says, Anudvega Karam Vakyam. He says, don't agitate your speech should be like that. It cannot agitate another person. Anutvega karam vakyam. Satyam priyam. There also he is telling, your word should be satyam and he is telling priyam. Hitam chayat. So, um, so that's what is being uh, told, you know, by the Lord also in the Bhagavad Gita, he is speaking that. So, this is an axiom. It's not something that is uh, optional. We have to follow this. So, Manu Samhita, you know, it says, if one speaks the truth, he should speak it palatably. One should not speak the truth unpalatably. You know? So, basically, uh, words that emanate from our uh, mouths uh, should be like, um, you know, these hearts coming out, you know, uh, emanate love, mm -hmm. I, I'm not telling this sentimentally. Our whole process is of uh, sharing the love that Lord Chaitanya showed to everybody. Uh, so he is talking about Krishna Prema. Prema Pumarto Mahan. He said, love for the Lord. Love for the Lord means love for the, his parts and parcels also. So why we have to create a world around us where it's all about, uh, you know, um, hurting each other and being envious of each other, being jealous of each other. Why can't it be a world where we are nice to each other? We are, uh, you know, we are not duplicitous. We are not manipulating people uh, like that. Why can't we? And it is for us to create that world around us. Because eventually, if we act like that with people, people also will reciprocate in the same manner. So uh, this is a very important principle. So this is a story of the king and the astrologers. Um, I'm not going to narrate this story here. Pradi Prabhu, Lata Mataji, the story is in the booklet. So you can read. Um, Pradi Prabhu, I gave you a copy. Maybe you can just take a photo and a, a snap on WhatsApp or whatever and send it to Lata Mataji so she can also read that story. So I'll skip this. So... Um, Prabhupada, in one place, he says the two most basic principles of life are uh, truth and non-violence. He says these are the fundamental principles in life, truthfulness and uh, non-violence. So, when you are speaking the truth, like, you know, there is an apple, there is a green apple, 
and then you're being very compassionate also or non-violent even to the smallest of living entities so in the context of what we are dealing with we are talking about speaking palatably so speaking unpalatably is a violent behavior speaking uh, palatably is non-violent behavior so you're speaking the truth but you're also speaking in a non-violent manner then the result of this kind of uh, speaking is uh, can you tell what it would be you're speaking the truth and uh, you're also speaking it in a very nice manner what could be the result based on the image that is there you all can tell something we can win the hearts of others okay yes okay uh, can you put it in one word mata ji we can win the hearts of others okay fine any any other answer okay i will ask specifically then ashwini mata ji <laughs> you're not answering so i mean nobody is answering only pranasakhi mata ji told what do you think what is a result of this equation what is the right hand side of the equation representing ashwini mata ji is there okay padma mata ji yes prabhu ji i am here okay uh, so you can think of something ah uh, i'm thinking i can't think of anything <laughs> okay sorry i am leaving you and drinking little milk hope it's fine okay so this is basically trust when you speak the truth we have seen this in the previous sessions also um we have spoken so much about trust being a factor in uh, uh, speaking being truthful so when you and when you especially when you speak it very palatably the person to whom you are speaking uh, you will be able to win the hearts of that person basically it means trust you will gain the trust of that person okay so the next equation is you are speaking the truth you know but you are speaking it in a violent manner right so what could be the result of this hatred okay very good yeah hatred or hurt you know so heartbreak <laughs> yeah <laughs> heartbreak yeah so you know the other person gets hurt yeah you are speaking the truth but then you put it across in a very very you know vicious and violent manner so obviously it's going to break the heart of the other person and it will create hatred you know for you All right now you're speaking a lie so you're telling this is green apple but actually it is a red apple inside so it's a lie but then you're speaking it very palatably you in some people are there they'll speak like as if honey is dripping from their uh, mouths but then everything that they say would all be nonsense no uh, it will not be truth so what is the result of uh, that what does this mean stop we don't want to hear okay mata ji opposite of what you told they will lose trust mm exactly you can do this one time two time three times you can do eventually if they find out that all you are doing is covering up with all your niceties and uh, uh, great etiquette and you know social good social demeanor and all that you have you behave like a gentleman but then uh, your intentions are very very uh, you know not very uh, straight forward then that will create mistrust people will lose trust okay so now what is the next combination is <laughs> the worst one 
So truth, like non-violent. Okay, we said first truth, non-violent. Then truth, violent. Then untruth, non-violent. Now what would it be? Untruth, violent. Ah, correct. So untruth. Violently. So, what you are speaking is a lie, and that also you are speaking very harshly. So, what would be the result? You know what this character is? If you have kids, you would have. Hmm? No, no. No, Mataji. Kids will know. Actually, if you call your kids and ask them, they will tell you what it is. This character is called Angry Birds. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> so, okay, when you're speaking untruth in a harsh manner, what will it create? Angry. Yeah, yes. it will create anger. Right? So, basically, this is the equation. You understand, you know, this is like a matrix of life. You know, <laughs> so these are the different outcomes of uh, how we act, uh, how we act. Okay. So, yeah, this is the verse that I was uh, talking about. So Krishna is telling Anudvega. Udvega means to agitate. Anudvega means to not agitate. Anudvega karam. Now, your vakyam, the words that you speak should be anudvega karam. It should not agitate someone else. Then it should be satyam. It should be truthful. Priya, it should also be spoken very palatably, pleasingly. And hitam, it should be for the benefit of someone else. Then it should be based cha eva. All of these, you may be unagitatingly speaking, you may be speaking the truth, you may be speaking it very pleasingly, and you may be speaking for the benefit of others, but then they should be based on the instructions of the scriptures, or on, uh, based on the study of your scriptures, or your study of the scriptures. Swadhyaya bhyasanam cha eva. So... You know, this is, and Krishna is telling, Vanmayam Tapa Uchyate. This is basically the manner in which you follow um, the Tapa of Vak, control of your words, you know, austerity of speech. This is how you practice. So, with this, we are concluding the um, dynamics of truthfulness. Now, we are coming to practicing truthfulness. How you will be able to, you know, uh, conquer um, untruth and be able to practice truthfulness. So here we are saying that uh, um, first become aware. Now that is what the Truth Tracker project did. Now we have already explained diagnosis of a disease is basically half the disease cured. At least you know that, okay, these are the problems that you have. So, this Truth Tracker project is basically meant for that. That, okay, this is where I stand. You at least know now that I have the habit of speaking, say, 5 to 6 or uh, 15 to 20 lies every day. Uh, so, at least you are aware where you stand. Right? So, um, we are saying that for everything, you question your motives and the costs. What is it that is driving you? What's your motivation to make you tell a lie? And what is the cost of telling that lie? So one is behind you, that is what is pushing you. The other is ahead of you, what is going to hit you? Okay, so motives are what are pushing you from behind. Costs are what are going to hit you from the front. You know, so costs or consequences or results or whatever. Uh, so always question your motives and costs. What will be the cost? At what cost am I lying? Um, so we saw the matrix uh, earlier. So is it going to create anger? It is, is it going to create mistrust? Is it going to enhance trust? Or what is it going to do? So always question these things. So questions like, why am I manipulating my thoughts? Why am I uh, doing this? You know, how will I benefit by exaggerating? Is it really very important that I exaggerate uh, something here? Why am I avoiding telling the truth directly and clearly? It's actually a habit 
you know habit forming thing why can't i speak the truth directly and uh, clearly what is this costing me will i be true to myself by telling lie after lie will my conscience be pure and clear by avoiding uh, the truth so all of these things are certain questions that you should ask yourself and then we will give you some tips you no know, but then it is for you to practice practice and practice now without you practicing we giving you uh, tips like say for instance sachin tendulkar would not have become sachin tendulkar or anybody you know virat kohli would not would not have become virat kohli without the amount of practice that they put they weren't born with a cricket bat in their hand somebody gave it to them but then they chose to practice properly and that's why they became the greats that they are today so it is we can equip you with some tools we can equip equip you with some uh, tips but then it is for you to practice without you practicing it's not going to work so we have told so many things you know why be truthful why do we lie dangers of being untruthful so many concepts we have uh, uh, spoken to you about you know all of these concepts in the past sessions we have spoken to you about but then it is for you to put all of these into practice if not all of them at least some of them you should remember these things and then put them into practice it's very very important that way uh, prabhupada also says that even higher than philosophy is a practice of philosophy now somebody who just knows philosophy is called an armchair philosopher you know armchairs um easy chair you not know, like that old people you know you know some few years ago a few decades ago old people used to sit on that easy chair and then keep talking some wise things wise cracks you know, like that so they are called as armchair philosopher so they'll just sit on a chair and then give uh, pravachan lecture, uh, lecture or bhashan that's all but prabhupada is saying yeah one one thing is to know the philosophy but then it is higher to practice the philosophy so yeah we have spoken to you about many uh, concepts we have told stories we have you have watched videos you have had activities you have had fun but then if you just take the fun and then leave the rest then it is all a waste of time so you please put these things into practice so encourage kids to start practicing what we have what we have spoken so this is just a demonstration uh, how by practice little by little we'll be able to move ourselves higher so this activity is called i mean demonstration is called high higher highest so you'll have to call three volunteers and uh, give them a chalk piece you know each each of them can be given a chalk piece or they can have a pencil or something like that so what you have to do is ask them to write their first names on the board if you have a board or even on the wall or you can just ask them to um um you know just write their name on the wall with a chalk piece i mean, it will not be very clear but it's all right you know you know so volunteer 1 2 3 you know they write their names on the board then you tell oh sorry then you tell them okay uh, purposely what you should do is you should take one person who's a little short another person who's of medium height and another person who's taller Uh, who's uh, tall so you take three volunteers like that you pick you know like that then uh, you ask them to write okay now you tell them that the idea of uh, this activity is to see uh, who writes the their name highest at the highest point so now you tell them okay i didn't tell you this before i'm sorry but this is the purpose of the activity so now um you stretch as much as you can and uh, please write it uh, you know little higher than what you did like that but in one stretch you cannot keep jumping and uh, writing but in one stretch you will have to write uh, so they will stretch themselves and they will uh, write um so okay they have done now you tell all right i will give you one more opportunity you know because I, this is your first attempt we'll treat this as uh, your uh, uh, heats now the reals are coming so you stretch as much as possible you know is this a maximum that you could do is this the best you could do no you stretch yourself further 
and as much as possible you stretch yourself and write it maybe see if you can write it a little more uh, high so they will stretch a little more and probably they'll write it a little higher than uh, they did before so now you turn towards okay you know i applaud them ask them to go back and sit in their seats obviously the person who's the tallest would have uh, written the highest so you uh, you turn towards the rest of the class and then you ask them okay so what do you think who won who won this uh, activity like that then you know obviously all the kids will say oh volunteer 3 uh, he is uh, having the name highest so you tell actually in my opinion all of them won because first they wrote their name and then after that when i told they have to write it high they wrote and then the third attempt they all all of them beat their own uh, um, you know second attempt in the third attempt they they did it better than the second attempt so this is how practice will make you better and better you know it will give you an ability to stretch yourselves beyond what you thought was your maximum cap- capability even beyond that when you practice you become better and better and better at uh, something so that is why we are saying please go ahead and practice these principles put them into application don't just uh, you know oh you have uh, heard all these things and it is sufficient it will make changes no it will not make changes unless you practice so that is what this demonstration basically is uh, showing mm-hmm. so now we are actually coming to the principles the first principle is using the four gates of speech um this is another story basically uh, this is a story where a um two people one young man and an old man both of them are there uh, okay i'll not narrate the story i'll uh, it's a little long so i'll send the story prabhu pradeep prabhu and lata mata ji i'll send you the story so you can describe this basically the moral of the story is don't just unnecessarily uh, throw words you know don't go around uh, speaking you know whatever you want to speak because then retracting those words back will become very very difficult so that's what uh, we are trying to convey here so the four gates of speech are there are two practices one recommendation is a buddhist sufi recommendation and then there okay now there are four gates the first gate the buddhist or sufi practice they are saying that whatever words you speak first they should go through this particular filter or gate of truthfulness you should always check if uh, the words that you speak are uh, truthful then there is a second gate this is of being kind this is a second gate that this practice mentions and then there is a third gate it is called the beneficial gate is it going to benefit the person who to whom i am speaking the truth and then the fourth thing is timely is it of uh, um, appropriate time it has to be spoken in a timely manner that is what we are uh, you know the buddhist practice actually talks about as the four gates of speech so all the words that we speak should go through these uh, four gates this also you know um, very surprisingly three of these uh, four gates lord krishna also has spoken in that verse that we saw anudvega karam vakyam there also krishna is saying satyam he said priyam and he also said hitam of course anudvega karam he said here the buddhist uh, practice it is saying it, it should be timely right so all the words that we speak should go through these four gates of uh, speech and then they should reach the person uh, to whom it is intended so this is the four gates of speech technique so this is an activity basically we are uh, Uh, telling that you will have to communicate an unpleasant message to your classmate uh, pradeep prabhu lata mata ji that message is also there in the activity mm. 
in the booklet. Uh, Pradeep Prabhu, please send a snap of that to Lata Mataji. Um, yeah, you see gather, pair, share here. So the same activity is here on page 20. Page 20, this is there. The unpleasant message that has to be communicated to the classmate that is mentioned here in the booklet. So basically we are telling, please apply the four gates of speech to your message. So um, there is a home assignment also. You can give this home assignment to them. Okay. Now the second uh, principle is of being independently thoughtful. This is a term that Prabhupada coined and he used very often. He always said that um, I want my disciples to become independently thoughtful. I want my followers to become independently thoughtful. I want my devotees to become independently thoughtful. Prabhupada has mentioned in uh, several on several occasions, he has mentioned this. So what is the meaning of being independently thoughtful? Obviously, thoughtful means like a muni. You know, he wants, Prabhupada wants everybody to be very thoughtful and then, uh, you know, act based on thoughtful considerations. What does it mean to be independently thoughtful? Independently thoughtful means independent of preconceived notions, independent of biases, independent of impositions, independent of external influences, all of these things. And the most important uh, independence that we need is independence from our mind's whims. So the best thing, actually what Shastras recommend, is if you want to become thoughtful, you have to follow the instructions of the Shastras. If you, you know, follow the instructions of the Shastras, you are contemplating on the words of the scriptures and then you are acting. So that is meaning, that is being thoughtful. And if you if are basing your actions on Guru Sadhu Shastra, that is total independence. Independence of even my own mind's uh, creations. That is actual being independently thoughtful. So we are saying being independently thoughtful means not like what people think, oh, I can say whatever I want to uh, after uh, sitting and watching a television. Now people take information from TV and mobile phones today. It is actually like an octopus having, you know, caught us. Television is like that. You know, hypnotizing us and then creating social uh, uh, viewpoints, social systems uh, based on, um, I mean, there are, these are probably, uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, conspiracy theories. In uh, America, they say that actually the government manipulates the citizens using s television sitcoms, uh, mean, meaning serials. You know? The government actually used it in the 70s and 80s as a means of uh, controlling the uh, minds of, uh, not minds, controlling the social culture of uh, U.S., you know, by promoting, not saving, spending everything, take credit cards, enjoy life, drink, uh, womanize, and, you know, do whatever, eat meat. All of these social cultural aspects were driven by television sitcoms, television serials, again and again and again bombarding people. Uh, series like Friends, series like Santa Barbara, series like uh, Riviera, you know, so many Bold and the Beautiful. All of these, you know, they show high class people, you know, drinking wine and uh, living life in the merry way. So this whole social uh, culture in America was, and in the West predominantly, was created, by, driven by the government to promote a particular kind of uh, uh, lifestyle using television sitcoms. So, you know, you, actually it is possible to do propaganda. So being independently thoughtful means being objective, first thing is that, that means deciding based on facts, not on subjective opinions and my personal considerations. Fact, fact, not that is being independently thoughtful. Second is free from influence of external factors. External factors, like I said, television, media, people, peer, peer pressure, blah, 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 all of those things, you know? Uh, 
anyway don't worry if they are not completely getting this concept we'll revisit independently thoughtful again in discretion in other values and all sense control later and so it's okay we are just giving the tip of the iceberg right now okay and also independent of your own perception so this is what i explained before so uh, not just freedom from external factors but freedom from your own biases also your own preconceived notions also you know that also you be independent of right so now this is a class activity multiple images will be displayed observe each image and answer the question that is asked one minute uh the question is what is the age of the lady who is sitting next to the gentleman what do you think could be the age of the lady take a guess 14 years 14 yes 14 okay. years others No idea. <laughs> Take a guess, Madhu Ji. I am not giving medals. <laughs> yeah, some ten, ten years. Oh, ten years. Okay, fine. All right. Anyone else? Padma Madhu Ji, Ashwini Madhu Ji. Okay. They don't know. All right. So this is the photo from the front. <laughs> so you see, we already had a preconceived notion because I told that uh, age of the lady, our mind gets locked to that notion. It's a preconceived notion. You know, I told it is a lady. So you know, generally our minds, what it happens is gets caught within that box. that's why they say in the corporate world think out of the box out of the box means beyond our uh, daily experiences and notions and uh, perceptions and all that so you know our minds can i mean our uh, eyes can fool us very easily okay now all of you tell me what you see do you see that the sides of the square are bent no you don't see you see them they are straight yeah like in middle uh, they bent ha ah, middle they are bent right okay uh, pranasaki mata ji what do you think uh, yes prabhu middle they have uh... yeah. uh. <laughs> they are bent right okay let's little see little bent uh, when you come yeah. closer it is showing less <laughs> now <laughs> <laughs> yeah they are not bent you know so yeah you know basically we can uh, see things so what we see is not what actually the reality is this is being objective right okay do you see water here in this uh, photograph no uh near the tree line you see at the foot of the okay i'll show you see the foot of the mountain and then do you see water here with reflection and all that mm -hmm. little blue mm -hmm. color it is <laughs> little blue color okay okay so basically it looks like water it's actually mirage mm -hmm. now you know mirage um yeah when uh, we are driving it on the road on our car uh, it will be like a ah correct like a water something yeah so that's a mirage okay now do you see the almonds the badam moving on the screen no no i can they're all moving <laughs> <laughs> okay and anyway. you fine huh yeah so okay so uh, we saw some you know uh, wild illusions like that uh, so basically you know what we are saying are uh, 
these four defects are there in every condition soul you know them so you can explain them imperfect senses tendency to become illusion tendency to commit mistakes and uh, cheating pro propensity these four are the four defects of a human being so with all of these how can i be absolutely sure that what i'm speaking is factual so we have to verify data before we uh, pass it on to someone else for that we'll have to cultivate the ability of being independently thoughtful so one technique we have given there is one more uh, in the booklet apart from the four gates of speech there is also something called the triple filter test that is there in the booklet but we are not covering in the session when they read they will understand so anyway um so this is independently thoughtful being independently thoughtful is a next technique that we are talking about so you do the recap and then of this session uh we are not doing this uh so you do the recap of the whole module and finally q and a and then you make uh, recite make them recite this uh, uh small segment of a verse okay hari krishna prabhu the project only in uh, one student from each class uh, they are not doing like all, all the groups whatever we are uh, giving the, the Wha project. which pro which project mata ji uh, last before week um, about uh, truth and lie cuttings from the newspaper ha uh ha -huh, collage and yeah yeah collage and second week uh, about uh, the tiads uh, advertisements uh, something okay they that. didn't do no not like uh, exactly but uh, so uh, one or two groups they are doing not like groups individually they are doing you should give them some chocolates mata ji oh. okay <laughs> something something to motivate them you know, incentivize their participation you give them something if the booklet had been there mm -hmm. you see the booklet like in the honesty booklet mm -hmm. the um, senior booklets also have this space you know this is for session 1 session 2 where we give those seals here mm -hmm. for activities home assignments you have a legend also here see you can see class activity one stamp uh, mm -hmm. yeah yeah, uh, yeah home assignment to um, like that you know different number of stamps are all mentioned mm -hmm. so this is there it is not there or what we can do for the next module okay we can we can just do like this you can ask them to keep one a4 sheet of paper or uh, they, they do they bring their rough book yeah yeah they are bringing okay so you can tell them on the rough book you write the name of the module on the last page mm -hmm. so every uh, uh, time you know if uh, some students are uh, you know participating in the class you generally feel good about their participation or they have done an activity in the class and the home assignments and all of those things if they are participating you give i will give you this legend how many stamps you have to give on the back side back page i mean like uh, uh, one of the pages in the book only they can write on top truthfulness or uh, say the next value is uh, cleanliness they can write cleanliness and then uh, session 1 you can keep giving seals you know oh, to the oh. kids so oh, maybe okay. that will and you tell whoever gets the most number of seals i'll give a prize at the end of the module like that okay prabhu we'll do that something like that we'll have to motivate the kids by uh, you know a little bit reward and recognition like that mm -hmm. just uh, immediately i am making them to claps like uh, make them to ah. stand in a That's yes what yes doing. yeah and, that you can do you can also you know ask pranasaki mata ji to uh, take the best collage from the class and probably it can be put up on the notice board or something like that school notice board or something 
okay whatever they did that's the best they are doing very good only but uh, not okay. all of them there okay so you can do something like this okay prabhu okay all right all right hare krishna hare krishna mata ji so is it hare okay krishna. yes prabhu yeah. okay fine prabhu. all right Thank you Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna